If you know all of his word is true, why don't you stand and worship? We encouraged by the choir to worship. Don't care what's going on. We can trust him. Come on, sing with the choir if you will. and right close Father in heaven again we thank you for bringing us to the moment of preaching your holy word as we stand Father we stand totally depending on you give us preaching power give us preaching grace Lord give us anointing that will destroy yokes and deliver from bondage Father, I pray as always that you cancel out every stratagem and scheme of the enemy. That nothing will hinder your word from going forward. In Jesus' name. Give us ears to hear. Hearts to receive. And a willingness to live it out in our lives. After we have heard from you. In Jesus' name. Every heart say amen. Come on, one more time. Bless God for our young people. The choir, certainly we thank God for navigating our niches and allowing us this privilege of being participatory in this place of praise once again. It's good to be alive. I think I need to suggest that again. It's good to be alive. Alert and active. For it is in Him we live, move, and have our being. Yes, Lord. Certainly, where we are, God brought us. Yes. What we have, God gave it to us. Amen. Amen. And what we know, God taught us. Yes, long, long sentence made short. We are nothing without him. Amen. Uh, we bless him for what he is doing in our lives and what he is going to do. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Romans chapter 3. Verses 21 through 26, Romans chapter 3, verses 21 through 26. And when you would have found it, you would discover these words. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and unto all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus, Jesus. God's, gift God's gift of righteousness. righteousness. Look at another neighbor and say, Jesus, Jesus. God's gift God's of righteousness. If you believe that, come on, put your hands together and bless him today. <laughs> Romans is known as the gospel of justification and salvation. Paul thoroughly explains why man need to be made right with God and how man has righteous status before God. It is in chapter 1, Paul reveals to us that God judges ungodliness and unrighteousness. He says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. In other words, knowing the truth is not enough. Because you can know the truth and hide it in unrighteousness. He seems to respond to those who would possibly object of what his teachings were, is. Who might think they are righteous before God by their lineage, good deeds, and their knowledge of God's law. It doesn't matter who you are and whose you are, what you know and where you from, who you related to uptown and downtown, what your position might be. Whether you are prominent or poor, everybody who is without Christ is unrighteous and ungodly and God's wrath is poured out against all ungodliness and unrighteous men it doesn't matter if you're Jew or Gentile all men are ungodly and unrighteous before God without Christ every man every woman every boy every girl needs faith in Jesus Christ to stand righteously before God. In other words, all men are made right with God the same way. Look at your neighbor and say, all men are made right with God the same way. All are made righteous by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only one who gives sinners righteous status before God. Ah, oh, only Jesus can make you right with God. Look at your neighbor again and tell him only Jesus can make you right with God. None of us stand in righteousness by our own merit or good deeds. Good deeds are good, but good deeds can't make us right with God apart from Jesus. Good talk is good, but good talk uh, can't make us right with God apart from Jesus. Giving good is good, but giving good can't 
make us right with God apart from Jesus. In other words, there is no one, not one of us in here made right with God in uh, with God by what we do, by what we give, by what we say, and by how we look. Now, that don't get me wrong. If it's all right to do good, it's all right uh, to give good, it's all right to talk good, but talking and looking and giving and doing by itself cannot give you righteous status with God. There's absolutely nothing you can do to make yourself right with God apart from Jesus Christ. Isaiah the eagle eye prophet tiptoe into the premise of this particular preaching assignment and he reveals the truth of us apart from Christ. In Isaiah 64 6 he says we are all as unclean things and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. At our best without Jesus Christ we are impure and belong to the sinful club of unrighteous things. Oh, we're not made right by our own merit, by our own doings, by our own giving, by our own talk. There are no works of our own that makes us right before God. Matter of fact, Paul in this particular chapter, chapter 3, verses 10 through 18, reveals that we were and some of us are still totally depraved. He says there is none righteous. No, not one. There's none that understands. There's none that seeks after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of acts is under their lips whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. He discloses the consequence of Adam's fall in the Garden of Eden. Every person born into the world is enslaved to sin. And as a result of their fallen nature, apart from the efficacy and Provenient grace of God uh-huh. is utterly unable yeah. to choose to follow God, yeah, right, yeah. refrain from evil, and accept the gift of salvation right. as it is offered. Right. Paul says all of us oh. are guilty yes, of the same thing. Oh, that's right. Verse 21 of 23, he says, for all. Oh, I wish I had a praying church. Have sin. Past tense. But then he brings a present reality and come short. Present tense. You messed up in the past. Have sin. And come short, which means on your own you messed up now. He says, for all have, all have sinned and come short. He reveals that everyone is guilty before God. I know you've been a little better than the next person. I know you hadn't committed the same public sin. As the person committed sitting beside you. That's right. That's right. But you're guilty. That's right. That's right. 
Your sin may not be what my sin is or the person's sins beside you, but you guilty. Before God. This is a universal sinfulness of man. All have. All have. All have. That's why I don't understand why some people are so puffed up. Arrogant. Self-conceited. In, in and, and you got the same issue as everybody else. Look at your neighbor and say, you guilty. You, 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 you guilty. You, you, you guilty. If you don't think you're guilty, you need to get up and get out of here. You guilty. Because what I discovered is that church is a place for guilty people. We just know we, we, we need the Lord. See, when you, when you know you're guilty, you know you need God. <laughs> we, we, we're guilty. This is a place for the guilty. And if we are all guilty of sin, how can we have righteous status? Before God. Oh. If we are all guilty. How can we. Have righteous status. Before. God. Well Paul helps us. Here it is he. Divulges two particulars yes, that helps us yes, understand our righteous status yes, before God. He first of all deals with the manifestation right. of God's righteousness in verse 21. He says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Notice the word manifest. The word manifest means manifestly declared. It means to make known. Uncover. Reveal. He says it is not uncovered. And reveal made known by the law. Oh, our righteous status before God yeah. is apart from yeah. the law. All right. All right. In other words, you do not sin right before God because you know the law. You, you don't stand right before God because you observe religious rituals. You do not stand right before God because you offer God a sacrifice. There's no work of the law that causes God to see us as right. Paul wrote to the church of Philippi in Philippians chapter 3 verse 9. He says that we are to be found in him. Yeah. Not having our own righteousness which is of the law. Yeah, yeah. But that which is through the faith of Christ. Yes, the righteousness yes, which is of God by All right. That's right. faith. That's right. That's right. God's righteousness right. is apart from yeah. the law. Because the law can only reveal to us our need of Jesus Christ. Oh, the law serves as a means to humble us. 
to keep us from being uh, boastful about what we have done yeah, right. and what we are doing. Right. The law was given to show us how desperately needful yeah. Yeah. we are right. of Christ. Yes, sir. That's right. Can't make you right. Yes, but it points you in the right direction. That's right. That's good. That's right. That's good. Look at your neighbor and say, can't make you right. Can't make you right. But it points you in the right direction. For Paul said in Galatians chapter 3, 24, 25, wherefore the law was made, was our schoolmaster right. to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that, faith is come. We are no longer under a school master. Cannot make you right with God because we are guilty of breaking the law. And so Paul affirms that the true righteousness of God is unto all men who believes. That's right. Not because you read the Bible. Not because you come to Sunday school. Not because you come to church. Not because you stand around and hear biblical conversations. But because you believe. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to believe. So God, he manifests his righteousness, not by the law, but Paul, two chapters prior, reveals how God uncovered his righteousness. He says, through preaching of the gospel. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 17 Paul says for I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God ah unto salvation to every one who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek for there is in the law I mean in the preaching of the gospel the righteousness of God which is revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith God manifests his righteousness in such a way that he might show himself to be the just God he is God is just he's just in that he required a sacrifice for sin. He is absolutely just. That's right. That's right. And he absolutely refuses to give salvation to a lost world in any other way. All right. You must believe. You must believe the gospel. How can you hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? But he's not sent to preach feel-good messages. I'm preaching better y'all saying amen. He's not sent to preach Prosperity messages. He's not sent to tickle you. He's sent to tell you that God loved you enough to send his only son. That's the gospel. And his son did something we couldn't do. His son went to a hill called Calvary. Is there anybody in here know about Calvary? That if it had not been for Calvary, we'll still be lost in our sins. But thanks be to God for Calvary. 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 
where he hung between two thieves when he came up the ghost and died for our sins. But thanks be to God that death is not the end of the story. That Sunday morning he got up. That's still the, the preaching of the gospel. I don't care how modern we get. I don't care how technical it gets. You can't be saved if you don't hear one Friday he died. And Sunday morning he got up. Preaching the same story. Reverend Walker preached for years. Nothing new. That if you're going to be right, you must believe in Jesus. If you're going to be right, you must believe in Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, if you're going to be right. You must believe in Jesus. There's no power to make you right in Rogers. No power to make you right in any preacher. But if you're going to be right, you must believe in Jesus. He, he, he reveals the manifestation of God's righteousness. But secondly, I see the method of God's righteousness. Jesus is the method in which we receive God's righteous status. Verse 22, he says, this righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. Our righteousness before God is not through faith in self, Come on now. faith in rituals, Come on. faith in fickle and frail people, yeah, right. faith in bank accounts yeah. and financial portfolios, <laughs> faith in church membership, and faith in permanent positions. Yeah. The righteous status we have before God is through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, the faith, the faith in Christ. Paul is speaking of is more than knowledge of Christ. The devil knows God exists. The devil knows that Jesus exists. The devil knows that Jesus got power. The devil knows that Jesus was born of a virgin. So just knowledge, having knowledge of God and of Christ, but having no faith in him. I'm going somewhere. Won't save you. Or just calling his name. Won't save you. For Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. See, the faith in Christ that Paul speaks about in verse 22 is you submitting your life uh -huh. yeah. under Jesus' lordship. That's it. That's it. Yeah. In other words, yeah. it's faith uh -huh. that makes you surrender. Too many church folks still in charge of their own life. All right. All right. Y'all don't like that. I, 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 I told a class this morning, you know, when I preach, some folks say, well, you're shooting at me. Well, I'm trying to hit you. Because if I don't hit you, you won't do any better. 
Sometimes you need to leave church wounded. Yeah. Come on now. I, I, I didn't drive well over here to shoot and miss. <laughs> I want to hit you. This is a faith that makes you do what he said. Makes you surrender your life to him. He uses Abraham as an example. Abraham minding his own business with his family. And all of a sudden God came to him. They say, go to a country yes, that you know not of. Yes, uh-huh. The Bible says that Abraham packed up his stuff, yes, yes. took his wife, yes. messed around and took his nephew. Yes, his postman got away from all of his kindred, yes, but took Lot. That's right. That's right. Went into a far country and didn't even take him long yes, before they started arguing and bickering. Yes, over the land. Listen, this faith that I'm talking about is faith that makes you trust God in unknown territory. This is a faith that makes you put all you are and all you have on the line for God. It makes you give up what you want. What you like. What you desire, yeah. what you think, yeah. and say, God, yeah. I'm all yours. Yeah. However, you choose yeah. to lead me, yeah. send me, yeah. use me, yeah. it's yes. Yeah. That's biblical faith. See, if you are not willing to give up anything and say you following God, I doubt very seriously all right, all right, all right. that you're following him. You got to give up. You got to turn it loose. You got to let your own life go and give it over to him. That's why he said, if any man is out of king life, he must give his up. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. And if he give it up, yes, sir. I'll give him my life. Yes, sir. You're trying to hold on to it. I see how you, I lo- I'm looking at you. Uh-huh. How you're trying to hold on to it. And you think you can do more with your life than God is able to do with your life. And listen, you don't seek him until you make a mess out of the life you're trying to hang on to. But listen, if you just give it over to him, he'll straighten it out from the start. Do I have a witness? He says the method is faith, and this faith makes us submit our lives to his lordship. Who believes? He says, who believes? And I want you to understand that this believing is not a one time ordeal because who believes is present active participle it describes what you are doing as you are in other words it's not a one way or one time way of responding to God it's not just a revival experience a Sunday morning experience not just a Tuesday night. Come on, man. Bible study experience. More it's Wednesday morning. Bible study experience. Yeah, yeah. It's on and on and on and on and on until the on keeps going on. Do I have a witness? It's a continuous way of living. He says this righteousness is by faith and is given to all who believes. He says that when you believe in the Lord, he 
he says that we are all justified in other words he wipes all of our slates clean he has a large eraser and I told you earlier that we are all guilty for Paul said for we have all sinned and come short of the glory but thanks be to God for justification that God through the blood of Jesus declares us right do I have a witness and as I leave you I leave you with verse 25 that God has set forth his son Jesus to be a propitiation through faith in his own blood I thank God that he didn't do it by my blood because I was born with tainted blood but, but, but he did it by his son's blood his son's blood has no impurities his son's blood has no defilement his son's blood is pure and it satisfies and so Jesus is our propitiation which means that he is our expiation he he wipes our slate clean and that's why John says that if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and so as I leave you this morning we can stand before God in righteousness because of the price Jesus paid on Calvary he was buying our freedom he was taking care of our forgiveness when he shed his blood on Calvary ain't God you ought to shake your neighbor's hand and say neighbor if it hadn't been for Jesus I'd still be in my mess if it hadn't been for Jesus I'd still be on my way to hell if it hadn't been for Jesus I will still be a son of the devil but I thank God for Jesus because Jesus picked me up turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground Jesus knew we stood guilty but he took out his eraser which is his blood and started erasing away our sins now let me ask you one more time ain't he alright shake your neighbor's hand and said neighbor I thank God for Jesus because Jesus is my righteousness I thank God for Jesus because Jesus is my way out of no way I thank God for Jesus because Jesus is my lawyer who pleads my case and when Satan comes before the Father to bring up my sins Jesus said paid in full yeah Yeah! 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 Yeah!
Listen, he's our righteousness. Paul reveals to all of us we are all guilty of the same thing. All of us sin and come short of the glory. And because we sin, God's righteousness or God's wrath is revealed from heaven. But what keeps us from experiencing the wrath of God is the salvation that we have received, the righteousness we have received by faith through Christ. He has saved us. Set us free. He has gotten rid of the guilt. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. He's our righteousness. He wipes away. Listen, you may be here today and you're not saved. We say to you, come. Come. Jesus says, come. The preachers say, come. The welcoming committee say, come. The choir say, come. The deacons, the members say, come. Come, come, come. And listen, don't delay because Satan uses delay to destroy you. He says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. And if any man hear my voice and open, I will come in unto him. And I will suck with him. And he with me. Come, come. Receive his righteousness. Come on, come on. Second, if you're here and you're back, bless you, brother. Bless you, sister. Whoa.